Hi guys, so welcome back. Um, this is a different topic. I know I said I'm going to be posting more positive videos during this time, but um, I feel like with the platform that I have, I want to speak on real topics that are relatable to a lot of people. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is just health care and the treatment of black people, period, specifically black women. Um, I have a little bit of familiarity with this because I was originally a bio major for four years of college, well, four and a half. I changed my major at the beginning of this year to criminology because that's what I'm really passionate about. That's a whole nother discussion video we can talk about. Comment if you want to get that one. But, um, yeah, I'm 23 years old. I've been going to the gynecologist for the last three years. And it's been a challenging experience for me, mainly because I've been one of those people that have been you know, sad, sadly been involved in where doctors don't really care about my concerns as regards to my health. So I'm just going to run it back for y'all. Basically, the mortality rate in black women when it comes to health, it, it's ridiculous. It's so, it's so, I don't even know how to tell the difference between the heights and mortality rate. It just, I don't know how to tell how like high or low. I'm just saying a lot of us die. Just the straight up how I can tell you. Especially when it comes to female health. When it comes to gynecologic health, obstetric health. Honestly, my aunt, she was a nurse for 10 plus years before she went to medical school. She's officially a doctor now. Hallelujah. But when she was still a nurse, she would advocate for my aunt whenever she had her kids. Because a lot of times black women were disregarded when it comes to their health. I remember my mom she had me literally within hours and I remember her not getting an epidural for that and I was overdue. So she literally had to go for all of that. And then when she had the triplets, whew, I mean, they took care of her because it was a, a high risk pregnancy. So they had to take care of her. But a lot of the time, but this is back in like 90, 97, 98, we're in 2020 and black women are still disregarded. I mean, hell, you have stories of Beyonce going through all the stuff with the twins and the heartbeats on one of the babies stopping. She had to go for toxemia, preeclampsia, had all these conditions happen. Serena Williams, she had to go through having blood clots after giving birth and the doctors were listening to her. It took her husband to basically say, hey, my wife needs help. We've seen it with Remy Mom when she had the baby. All her health stuff that happened, she had to go back to the hospital three days after leaving because there was so much internal bleeding happening that they didn't know about because they wouldn't listen to her like and then there was another one i think judge told her her daughter-in-law she died because there was blood clots that basically caused her to have internal bleeding and the doctors and the nurses did not listen to her they were negligent they weren't back for hours to basically check on her you have to check her vitals and just everything connected to her you have ivs you have catheters you have different kind of medications going through your body and your system and post-surgery you don't know what's happening in there you have to constantly check and a lot of times doctors and nurses don't do that and is there a racial bias when it comes to healthcare? yes there is and here's my here's my story okay you're gonna get a lot of story time to me so i started going to gynecologist when i was 20. um my aunt was getting on to me saying i had to take better care of my health so i did um, I went to the um, hospital near my campus, set up an appointment. We did the initial preliminary appointments, um, ran through the basic questions of just my family health history, female health history, and basically I told her like my periods, the first half would be super heavy and my cramps were just really bad. And specifically, it was mainly on like my left side. And so, basically, she's like, oh, we don't have to take the ultrasound now. We can take it later. And then, basically, I had a follow-up because I had to get prescribed on iron medication because, based on the blood work she did, she basically deemed me as being anemic. So, she got me on iron medication, but not birth control. Um, basically, I got on the iron medication, went in the next year for my annual. The bleeding was still happening. I still had the cramps. They did the ultrasound and basically was like, okay, the low cyst you have 
are little pocket cysts. They're like tiny, as tiny as like a grain of rice. And they're supposed to be there. She told me it was normal. For basically my left one had a good amount of them. My right one barely had like one or two. Mind you, I was not even ovulating at this point. So the cyst was coming like, this was right after my period. So this is me having these cysts. I was not ovulating. I had this on this side with the most and this one with the least. So my cysts were, both my ovaries were producing different cysts as like eggs. So she got me prescribed on birth control. Basically just that random picked out one that was fairly new. Um, at 21, you have to get the pap smear. I'm like, can I not get it, please? She straight up told me, saying, if you can handle a tampon, you can s certainly handle a pap smear. And I said, excuse me, I have not been, I've never been sexually active. It, it, a tampon and a speculum are two different things. If you don't know a speculum, Google that and come back to this video, okay? So, it was literally a huge-ass speculum. I'm holding on for dear life to the side of this this whole exam board thing. Literally, I'm laid up, legs in the air, in the stirrups, holding on, just thinking, okay, I'm going to be fine. It just peers open. One, two, three. I thought that was it. Four, I was like, uh-uh, cut it, uh-uh. Cut the cameras, dead ass, I'm done. Uh-uh, I'm not doing this. And basically, she was like, oh, maybe next time. I'm like, that ain't going to be next time. I don't want to come back here. No. Like, <sighs> Like, I was literally traumatized by that. And thank God I had a friend drive me to my doctor's appointment because this... <laughs> I cannot drive home by myself after that. No. And so, I picked up my prescription. The birth control really, um... It was a lot that happened with my body. I gained 30 to 35 pounds within the first three months. Um, the first cycle of me taking it. Um, I had horrible acne. Um... My hormones are everywhere. And mind you, I had stopped taking the iron medication because really, it was just filling in the missing iron that was happening because my bleeding was just a mess. Um, basically, I didn't schedule my follow-up until February. And then I had to reschedule because I was starting my new job and rescheduled to May. But then they told me they had to reschedule it to later in August because they had... A bunch of closings happening. They were remodeling building the hospital. They had to move appointments. And then when August came around, they moved it again. And then they moved it to November. And the week before my November appointment, they called me saying, Oh, the doctor's going to be out. And, you know, we might have to schedule for a new doctor. At this point, I was irritated and annoyed. I was like, I need to get this fucking annual done so I can just get this over. Because, mind you, I, my cramps had gotten worse. Uh, my stress was bad because y'all already know the roomy situation I had. My stress was bad. School was causing me this panic. My job was kicking my ass. And I, I just wanted to get this done. So they gave me an appointment the day before New Year's Eve. I was like, great. Cool. I had to drive back to Kilton anyway because I was going out of town um, with my friend to my other friend's house in the city. So went to my appointment. It was at the new hospital. Did the paperwork, did the urine and blood test, and this, um, the doctor that came in, it was a man, they told me ahead of time, like, when I scheduled the appointment, basically, he was in his, he's in his mid-50s. I ain't gonna say his name on here. Um, basically, this, this doctor cared more about, like, patient care. Like, he made sure patient care was emphasized so much. And he asked me various questions. I told him this and that about my cramps, about my bleeding. He went ahead and was like, okay, let's go ahead and do another blood test. We're going to do an ultrasound. And before that, he said, we're going to have to do the pap smear. I let him know, hey, I'm not sexually active. He's like, okay, we're going to use the smallest one possible. We're going to have, you know, nurse, nurse A, I ain't going to say her name, Nurse A here so that she can help you through the process, make sure you're entirely comfortable with everything. Um, so she was there holding my hand. She told me, if you feel any discomfort, just let me know. Let us know. And at first it was bad. At first, you know, it was like, okay, okay. It was like one swift one. I was like, okay, you're doing good, Simone. And just went up the little swab, got in there, done. 60 seconds. 60 seconds was not even that wide open, okay? I was like, whew, 
No, that was done. I'm good. And also, my test came back negative. I I'm healthy, y'all. My test came back negative. We're good. <laughs> it's crazy because I literally just took the test like <laughs> like two weeks ago because I found the paper and I was cleaning out stuff. I was like, oh, maybe I should check out where that test is. And I was like, okay, you negative. Thank God. No cervical cancers or diseases or anything. I'm safe. So he did the ultrasound and this was um like a stomach ultrasound, not no pelvic because the pelvic had enough time. Pelvic's been through enough today. So he basically did the ultrasound and said that um, the amount of cysts that are on my ovaries were not normal. Um, he also said, y'all, this gnat, these gnats are coming out of the woodwork ever since it just started getting warm, I swear. But, um, he said the cysts that I had on my ovaries were not normal um, due to the amount and the size that they are. So he got me started on a different birth control because I had stopped taking the birth control I was prescribed on because you need a, once you come out on your annual, you need to take the annual so you can get a refill on your birth control prescription. So I had stopped taking it in August. And so, basically, I hadn't taken in about four months. So, he's like, okay, we're going to get you a new birth control so that we can control the cyst. Just handle the cyst area. Make sure this one has no weight gain. And get your hormones in balance. Because your hormones are really just kind of tricky right now. That's why we had to do the, do the um, urine test and the blood test. Because, you know, we want to make sure you're not pregnant. Because your hormones are almost at that HCG scale when it comes to like the estrogen and all that. And I just had my period, so it was obviously a concern. So he had me prescribed on new birth control and he told me to basically contact the office, contact him personally to basically tell him if there's any discomfort or any like side effects that you were concerned about. Um, he lists them all out to me. They gave me the whole pamphlet on checking on my stuff as well as um, stuff about endometriosis and picos because they want to make sure that if these pop up with what we got from the test and if these pop up, we want to make sure that you know specifically so that way you can call the office and we can run more tests and do what we have to do if this pops up. Also, um, the birth control actually stopped my bleeding, so... Thank God. Even though we have to restart with new ones and the bleeding and the cycle lasted kind of longer the first time with February. Whew. But, you know, I'm, I'm good. My weight gain has stopped. <laughs> and, you know, the cramps have not been as bad. Um, basically, they're always checking in to make sure that I'm okay. Because um, black female health is ignored so much in the healthcare system. And I'm really thankful that I have a doctor now that um, has been around for a good while and, you know, take more consideration when it comes to patient care, regardless of race. And I feel like doctors today, kind of the new age doctors, like the ones that are like got their own private practice or fresh out of like, not like med school, like fresh out of residency that are in their actual profession. A lot of the time, they just care about basically getting stuff done. Like, I remember from Grey's Anatomy, there was a doctor that basically chose to do C-sections on mothers when they could have just had natural childbirth. Now, natural childbirth is one thing. C-sections are a lot because they're basically coping, cutting open your body, taking your organs out, taking the baby out, and putting those back in. A lot can happen in between that, that surgical process. And that's why so many things happen in post-op because a lot of things can go wrong and black female health is so important that's why i want to say to anyone who's watching please take your health in serious in all seriousness i was fully serious of my health and basically i took the doctor's word initially but it went it took me going through all this in my body to realize i have to be my own advocate do your research on doctors. Do your research on what's happening with your body. If they don't listen, then you got to push. You got to push or 
go to a different person, get a second opinion. And I know insurance is hard to go by. There are local clinics that offer for free. Um, I know work insurance. I don't know if they offer health insurance these days, but they definitely do have um, Medicare and Medicaid available for people. It's just we got to take care of our black women. Black women need to be taken care of the same way as our non-black counterparts are. So, yeah, that's my little video for y'all. Um, I want to make one today because the rest of the stuff I got planned, you know, really is kind of just like the the least concerning thing. I just want to make this one because I feel like this is so important, especially in times like this. We're going through the pandemic. We're going through entire racial movement. So, yeah, I just want to get my voice out on that. Let me know in the comments how you guys feel. Do you got personal stories that you want to share in the comments? Share with me personally. You guys can DM me. Also, I'm linking different organizations in the description on where you can donate to. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.